we already have videos on our channel covering the targeting options you get for Pinterest, as well as all the ad formats and specs. But before you even get that far in the campaign setup, the first thing you actually should do is make sure that your Pinterest pixel or tag is loaded on your website. This is going to allow you to track visitors that you can use for audiences, but also to record conversion actions to prove the worth of your campaigns. So that is exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. I'm going to show you the easiest way to get the Pinterest pixel on your website, and then we'll go over which conversion actions you can start recording. Right now within Pinterest ads, I'm in the main overview section. So I'm not sure which view you're going to be looking at when you're watching this video. But to start setting up the conversion pixel, we need to click on ads and then go to conversions. I will admit this account already has had the Pinterest tag set up. So if you're setting this up for the first time or you just got into a Pinterest ads account for the first time, you will not see this Pinterest tag section on the page. Going through the Pinterest ads account setup for the first time, they will walk you through the setup and you will get a pop-up that'll have step-by-step -step instructions on how to add the Pinterest tag with Tag Manager. So in my case, to kind of replicate that, I'm just gonna configure my base code. But as you can see here, there are three ways you can add the tag to your website. So the one over to the right, you can choose to email the instructions to a developer. If you're not familiar with code, and if I say the word tag manager and that completely goes over your head, choose the option to email the directions to your developer who can get the code on the website for you. If you're really familiar with how your website is structured, you're okay updating any templates or code on your website, you can choose the middle option, which would be adding the manual tag to your website. It's really not worth me going through it because every website is gonna be structured differently. So that's something that you're gonna to have to figure out on your own if you choose that option. But the easiest one, like I said, is all the way to the left, is choosing a specific partner integration. The most common one and the one we're going to run through is Google Tag Manager. But you can see you have other options to add the Pinterest tag to your website. We have a few clients on Shopify and the easiest way to add it to that platform is to use the integration option here, even though we have Tag Manager on some of the Shopify platforms too. But you see there are other integrations available if you are using any one of them. So we could choose from one of the partners that we see here. And if you select Google Tag Manager, there will be some step-by-step -step instructions. Personally, I think the easiest thing to do is to leave this window open so I can copy the tag ID that I had to blur out. That'll be the specific ID for your account. I'm going to go into another screen where I have Google Tag Manager open already. I'm in my Tag Manager account. You can see on the left hand side, I've already in the tag section. I'm going to go up and click on new to build a new tag. Before we can save and publish anything, we have to name it. Next, click on tag configuration. You can go up and use the magnifying glass to search for the Pinterest tag, or you can just scroll down until you see the native option. And there it is, so let's choose that one. Now I'm gonna hop back to my Pinterest screen, and then I'm gonna highlight and copy the tag ID. So when we hop back into Google Tag Manager, I'm gonna paste it in this first field where it says tag ID. For the base code only, just to get it tracking on every page of your website, there's really nothing else you have to do with the tag. But what we have to do is add a trigger to your tag. This is telling Google Tag Manager when to fire this specific Pinterest tag. So if I click on this option, I have a few other triggers in here and we're gonna talk about some of those soon, but there will always be an all pages trigger set up within your Google Tag Manager. So then I can have this specific tag ID fire on every single page of my website. That's with the understanding that you have Tag Manager installed on every page of your website. But if you know you do, you can save the tag and then you'll have to make sure you submit the tag. We have a version name, just in case it breaks anything on the website, which it never has, and then I can publish it. Now that we know this is good, I'm gonna hop back into Pinterest, and then we can verify if the tag is working. I have the tag on my site now, and I know I mentioned before, we've done this already, so that's why you see this main Pinterest tag section on the website, but now you should have one pop up, especially if you're starting to see events come through. If you just wanna check if you've had the main pixel installed on your website, one of the ways you can test it out is to go to test events, Add in your website, and then click Launch. Pinterest has then opened up another window with the website that I added when testing the event, but I'm gonna hop back into Pinterest. And now I can confirm my website is receiving activity. I'm gonna quick jump to the website, choose another page, hop back into Pinterest, and another event has fired off. Since I chose all pages, each page view is gonna fire off a different event. Another way that you can test out if the base code is working on your website is to add the Pinterest Chrome extension. This one is so easy to find if you Google it yourself. Literally just Google the title of this, Pinterest Tag Helper. This is pretty much the same thing that Facebook, Microsoft Ads, Twitter has to verify that your tag or pixel is working on your website. So let's add this one to Chrome. 
I had to resize my browser a little bit so you can see my Chrome extensions. But that little red circle with the number one to it, I understand it could be hard to see depending on what device you're on, so I apologize. That red circle is gonna be the Pinterest tag helper. If I click on that one, I had to blur it out again, but it's confirming which tag ID is on this website and it's finding no issues with the tag, specifically on this page. And the only event I'm firing right now is just the base code. Probably wanna go around, check a few pages, especially all the important ones to your site, conversion action pages, shopping cart pages, all the good ones. And if it's working well, then you know your base code is set up properly. Now what we just ran through was the base code. Just pretty much tracking an audience and when people are visiting your website. While that's pretty helpful, the next thing we probably want to do is get some specific conversion actions set up. And we can also do this within Google Tag Manager. What if you want the tag only to fire off when a user performs a specific action? For example, maybe you want your conversion action to be when a user hits a specific thank you page. Maybe you want a fire event when a user just adds something to a cart. Another option that I use fairly frequently and have used in a lot of my event-based tracking demos is when someone watches a video on your website. We can also set up those types of actions within Google Tag Manager. So I'm going to hop back into that platform. You do have the option to go within your Pinterest tag and then you will be able to duplicate it and make edits to your new version. But I'm just going to go and create a new tag again. My goal with this tag is to have Pinterest fire an event every time someone watches an embedded YouTube video on our website. The tag configuration is going to start the same. This time I'll search for it. We need the Pinterest tag. I went ahead back to Pinterest, pasted my tag ID in, and for the event to fire, we don't want just the base code only. I want a specific event. And I purposely chose this one because when we look at the event options within this specific tag, watching a video is one of the events that we can create. But you can see there are event categories for add to cart. If they hit the checkout page, there's custom options. If you're not finding anyone that's already preset in here, specific page visits, perfect for your custom confirmation URLs. If someone performed a specific search on your website, signed up on a form, and view a category. But I already have watch video selected, so I'm gonna choose that one. And then going down to my triggers, I already have a YouTube views trigger created. And if you wanna know how you can record specific events of users viewing your YouTube videos embedded on your website, you can watch this video right here. We already have another demo in place. So to recap, I obviously have the right Pinterest tag. I have my tag ID in place. I specifically chose the watch video event to fire, and then my trigger is telling Pinterest to only fire this event, the watch video one, whenever someone watches a video on my website. So I'm gonna go and save this. I gotta submit and publish it, otherwise it's not going to work. But do understand you can preview all of your actions and test them out in Tag Manager before you publish anything live. I don't wanna do the preview mode right now, so I'm just gonna submit it. Hit publish, and now let's go back into Pinterest again and test out this event to see if it's working. I'm back on the test events page. It's gonna make me type in my website again, but luckily Google has it memorized. Let's launch our website in a new browser. And luckily for us, we have videos on our homepage. I'm gonna click on one to get it going and hopefully fire off the event. I apologize for having to look at that face again, but a few things happen. I know I have it cut off, but I can see within my Pinterest tag helper Chrome extension, a few events fired. That's because this specific trigger is gonna record when someone plays the video and when someone pauses it, and that's exactly what I did. So I can see that firing off my tag helper. I'm sorry I cut it off for this specific view. But if we go back into Pinterest, we see there are two specific events. Now that is happening due to how I have the trigger set up. If I only want Pinterest to fire off when someone plays the video, I'm gonna have to go back in and reconfigure my trigger to only record when someone plays the video. And you can see within that video trigger demo that I mentioned before, you will be able to include what you want within that trigger and what you don't. Let me run through one more scenario. I'm gonna do a little bit of fast forwarding so you don't have to see me set up a manual tag again. I duplicated the tag. It's got the same ID. You can see I call this one See Us Speak. And that is one of the pages that Michelle and I have on the website. Instead of watch video, I have the event to fire as a page visit. And for the trigger, I created a new one for anyone who goes to the See Us Speak page. Just to show you what it looks like, this trigger will only fire when someone lands on a page where the URL contains See Us Speak. Very common page visit one. We personally do not recommend using any basic page view as an event to fire and record. However, you can create these page view triggers if you are using website-based confirmation URLs 
after a person has completed a purchase. If they fill out a form to contact us, request a demo, start their free trial, you see where I'm going with this. Perfect for those confirmation URLs. So I close this out, save this new tag, publish it one more time, adding in the version name again, let's click publish, and then let's hop back into Pinterest one last time. We're back in the main tag manager portion within our Pinterest tag, and now under the Pinterest tag section, you're gonna see the event history. Depending on what events you have set up within your specific Pinterest tag ID, you can look within the past three days or within a custom range to see when these events have fired. We have a few options here. If I wanna remove and just see the watch video one where you can see a lot of it has happened fairly recently from the testing I was doing within this demo. And that's how you can watch to see when these specific events are firing. Like I said, Tag Manager is the easiest way to do this. And I'm sorry I couldn't go through every single type of trigger option that is out there that could help you fire specific events within your account. We're gonna put some of our favorite Google Tag Manager resources within the video description where you can go check out how you can record some specific events on your website, add them to Google Tag Manager, and then you can use that to fire off those events to start recording some Pinterest specific conversions. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.